Crabgrass. Mm -hmm. crab grass we live now? Fertilized. Everything. Poison the whole Call the Board of Selectmen's meeting to order for Wednesday, <coughs> April 20th, 2022. Uh, first thing on the agenda, is there any non-public session tonight? Jim? As of this point, there is not. Thank you. Okay, consideration of minutes. Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to table these minutes. There are motions that um, do not have who seconded. Um, this is a new secretary. Uh, I think she did a great job, but uh, there's a lot of proofing we need okay. to do to help her. So I'd like to make the motion that, to table the April 6, 2022 minutes. A second. S second. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next on the agenda, public hearings. And we have a lot of them tonight, so bear with us. And you will not hear just from me, the other selectmen. We're gonna also take part, because I think there's 11 of them. I know I like to talk a lot, but that's a lot. So <laughs> I'll do the first one, anticipated, unanticipated funds. Town of Wolf were to hold a public hearing on Wednesday, April 20th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. for acceptance of unanticipated funds in the amount more than $10,000 in accordance with RSA 31 colon 95 small b 3a for New Hampshire Department of Safety Highway Safety Grant in the amount of 10950 for additional enforcement patrols, bicycle and pedestrian safety, enforcement patrols and speed enforcement patrols. I assume the chief is going to deal with this one. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so I'm Chief Rondo, uh, Chief of Police for the Town of Wolfboro. Uh, these were uh, additional funds that had come in from a grant that we wrote uh, at the beginning of uh, the, the uh, fiscal year. And uh, we received two, uh, 2500 uh, in the same block, if you will, and then we received this plus up amount to bring it up to 10500 So. Uh, we're here before you tonight. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer it. I have a, I have a question for Jim. Um, are, are we approving the $10,950 or are we approving the $8,050 because we already had a public hearing on the earlier amount? Yes, you had already accepted that previous amount. So this is just the increased amount beyond that previous uh, number. Make a motion to that effect. Oh, yeah. Anybody from the public want to question the chief? No? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Board? I'll make a motion that the Board of Selectmen accept the unanticipated funds in an amount more than $10,000 in accordance with RSA 31-95B3A New Hampshire Department of Safety Highway Safety Grant um, in the amount of, well, it's not 10950 it's... It, it's 8050 uh, yeah, $8,050. Yeah, $8, uh, uh, for additional uh, patrols, bicycle safety, uh, pedestrian safety enforcement patrols, and speed enforcement patrols. Second? Second. Any all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Linda, you want to do the next one? We had a revision, yes, and revision on that one. Yeah, and I'll open up the public hearing, and when I read, board members, you're going to hear me change the amount to $3,108, which is correct. So here I go. The Wolfboro Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Wednesday, April 20th, 2022, at 6.30 p.m., or for the acceptance of unanticipated funds for an amount awarded that is less than 5000 in accordance with RSA 3195-B relative to a grant monies not to exceed $3,108 to the Town of Wolfburg to be used for the Lakes Region Household Hazardous Waste Production Facility Hazardous Waste Collection. Sarah? Yes, I'm Sarah Silk. I'm the site coordinator for the LRHHPF. And uh, I would just like to um, 
say that last year we had a, a really good year, even though we were still under the p pandemic. We had 424 people that attended from the town of Wolfboro, 184 that attended from Alton, those are the two member communities, and 125 people that attended from somewhere else. And they paid $10,281 to our facility to cover the cost of um, collecting their hazardous waste, and that was $2,000 more than the year before. We are getting increased number of referrals from DES in Pittsburgh. Uh, this year, um, it's kind of confusing. The 2666 was the grant that we have that goes from July of 2021 to June of 2022. I am here tonight relative to the grant that goes from July of 22 to June of 23, and I'm happy to say that's up to $3,108, and that helps to pay for the, uh, just a teeny weeny bit, but it helps to pay for our waste hauler. We continue to have clean harbors because we have had very good luck with their personnel, and we have no worries about how they handle the waste. We have a specific, and I do believe that the board has it, a specific uh, motion that the state would like you to make out. After you approve this, I will take care of the necessary paperwork with the town clerk. We will need a copy of the town's insurance and, and whatnot, and that's standard. Okay. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak to this public hearing? Seeing and hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board members, does anybody have any Questions or concerns for Sarah? Hearing none, I'll read the motion. We, the Board of Selectmen, hereby certify that we, duly elected selectmen of the town of Wolfboro, I hear, we hereby certify the following is a true copy of the vote taken at a meeting of the Board of, Board of Selectmen duly called and held on April 20th, 2022, at which a quorum of the Selectmen were present and voting, and vote that Jim Pinio, town manager, is du duly authorized to enter into contracts or agreements on behalf of the town of Wolfboro with the state of New Hampshire and any of its agencies or departments, and further to author authorize to execute any documents which may in his judgment be desirable or necessary to affect the purpose of this vote. Can I have a second? Second. second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? If you look at the two handouts that I gave you, one is our hazardous waste brochure. And you'll note that last year we did go up to $45 for every zero to five gallon increment for non-members to cover our cost. The other one is a Sharps brochure. Approximately 10 years ago, I worked with Dave Knox and we had one. I've been working with Lakes Region Planning Commission for the last year. We've come out with a new updated one where we highlight the use of the Becton Dickinson safety clip. I have one here in my hand. It's very, very tiny. You squeeze it, it opens up. It looks like one of those miniature staplers. You put your sharp in there, the end of your needle, flip it closed, off comes the needle. No one gets punctured. Back 10 years ago, it was $40,000 workers' comp if someone at the solid waste or cereal got pricked because of all the necessary um, testing that you had to do for HIV, hepatitis, etc. These things are dirt cheap. These things are less than $5. They used to be $375. You divide five bucks into $40,000, we could give one to everybody here, Alton and probably two other or three other towns, and it would cost us nothing, and our rates wouldn't go up for workers' comp. We'll be passing some samples of these out free when we do our medicine collections, which are June and August at Hazardous Waste in Wolfboro, September in Alton. We will be putting those flyers in the town hall, the library, the police department. We will be passing them out at Hazardous Waste. We want to keep everybody safe because it's not just diabetics, it's people with, with migraines and all kinds of other things that use these. And it's a little tiny thing you can put in your pocket and keep people safe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to do something a little different tonight. We have 11 temporary event permits on the agenda. 
So rather than everybody listen to me talk all night, I'm going to start down there with Brian. He's going to do the first one, then Luke, then Linda, myself, Brad, and then we'll start over again so you don't hear my monotone all night. Okay, Brian, you want to start off? Yep. The Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit for Wolfboro Parks and Recreation Department to host the 4th of July fireworks display on Brewster Academy Athletic Fields on July 4th, 2022 from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Rain date July 5th, permit number 2022-33. So, is there anyone who wishes to speak on this? Christine Collins, Park and Recreation Director. Uh, this is something that we haven't done since 2019, so we're bringing it back. We're excited. And um, the fireworks will be at 930. So we already got permission from Brewster, and we're doing this permit, and we've already signed the contract. So. Uh, Christine, how long is the current contract for now? We're doing it for one this year, and then I have a bid going out. I think it expires next week for a three-year bid. Any public discussion or questions for Christine? Seeing as there are none, board, any discussions? Yeah, I have one, and this uh, the police chief is here. It says on the temporary event, uh, form that came back from the department must have no parking ban. And is that an error for the fireworks? Yeah, I believe so. That is uh, for the parade. No parking ban for the parade. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. okay. And I have a motion, please. Move to approve a temporary event permit for Wolfboro Parks and Recreation Department to host the 4th of July fireworks display on Brewster Academy Athletic Fields on July 4th, 2022, from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., rain date July 5th, permit number 2022-33. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, hey, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Luke, you wanna take the yeah. next one? I'll open the uh, next public hearing. It's the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit for the New Hampshire Boat Museum to host painting class at Albee Beach on August 10th, 2022, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., rain date August 11th, permit number 2022-34. Is there somebody here that wishes to speak to that? Hi, Ann Lennon for the New Hampshire Boat Museum. We're just trying to expand our offerings this year, so we're taking in a painting class, because every year the museum does have featured artists for each month, so this is an expansion of that. We are aware of the parking pass at Albi, so if the art person taking the class is not from Wolfboro, they can either walk from the museum or get a ride with a Wolfboro pass holder. So we won't be taking up any extra parking spaces. Excellent. Are there any members of the public that want to speak to this? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing board members. Would you like a motion? I'd love a motion. <laughs> I move to approve the temporary event permit for the New Hampshire Boat Museum to host a painting class at Albee Beach on August 10th, 2022 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. rain date, August 11th. Second. Seeing the motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Yeah, I'll do the next one. The Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit for the New Hampshire Boat Museum to host a painting class at Albee Beach on August 16th, 2022, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., rain date, August 17th. Okay, this was just me being thorough. I did each event I did an application for. Um, it's the same class. It's just another week, so we're doing two offerings. Um, people can take either both class or they could just take one of the classes. So if anybody's interested. Okay. <laughs> Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to speak to this temporary event? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board members, do you have any questions? Hearing none, would somebody like to make a motion? I move to approve temporary event permit of the New Hampshire Boat Museum to host a painting class at Albee Beach on August 16, 2022, from 10, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., rain date, August 17th. I'll second that. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Wolf for a Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit Blue for a Lions Club to host a car show at the Nick on July 2nd, 2022 from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. This is part of the 4th of July Festival events, permit number 2022-36. Anybody here to talk to that? Thank you. Hi, Gina Lassard, Wolfboro Lions Club. Um, this will be our second annual car show. We had so much fun in the rain last year, we thought we'd try it again. <laughs> Now, I have a question. Okay. Some places consider cars 25 years and older as being, um, you know, for car shows. But are you just going to, is it going to be for every type of car? And yeah, car last rides? year we had it 1975 and older. This year we're going to be open to everyone. I already okay. had a question about electric vehicles. They're welcome. Scooters, tractors, motorcycles, whatever. Okay. Good. I like that idea. All right. Any questions from the public? If not, I'll close the public hearing. Board? I'll make a motion to approve temporary event permit for the Wolfboro Lions Club to host a car show at the Nick on July 2nd, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, this is part of the Fourth of July Festival events, permit number 2022-36. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Hey, Brad. Yeah, the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen uh, to consider a temporary event permit for the Wolfboro Historical Society to hold a vintage market on Ju July 9th through the rain date of July 10th, 2022, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Clark Museum Complex, permit number 2022-37. And Pat, are you going to present this to us? Uh, yes. The Historical Society has had um, a series of vintage markets for the past um, four or five years, I believe. And uh, last year we had six markets, and they were very uh, successful. Brought a lot of people to the museum that had passed by it for many years and never even gone in. So we have a, a, a more uh, visitors than we have ever had in the past, partially because of the, the markets, not entirely. So this year, we're going to have four, as you will see, we have four uh, permits, and we have the, the paperwork in order, and we hope that we have a good season this year. Okay, thank you. I'll open up the public hearing. Anybody in the audience or on the TV land won't have any questions? Bob? Come up to the microphone, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Bob Tuffer, and I live on Clock Road in Wolfboro. Uh, Last year, last spring, myself and a neighbor of mine, John Burt, uh, filed a legal action against the town of Wolfboro uh, to uh, relocate the farmer's market from Clark Park. That action resulted in an agreement between John, myself, and the Board of Selectmen uh, the agreement was signed by the chairperson at the time, Linda Murray, on August 18th, and John Burt and I signed it on September 8th. Uh, rather than, we've been through this several times, and I, I would just like to su summarize what the uh, deed restriction is about. And it, it's the Greenleaf Clark Grant, namely to be used solely as a public park of ornamental and quiet character for restful purposes. Now, I would like to define the boundaries of Clark Park. This is item one in the agreement. Clark Park is an approximately 2.0 acre public park located in Wolfboro on South Main Street, bordered entirely by South Main Street, Clark Road, Goodrich Road, and East Clark Road. 
I would like to move on to another item in the, um, in the agreement. For any use of Clark Park that the town is requested to allow by permit, license, agreement, or otherwise, the town shall hold a public hearing prior to the issuance thereof. Notice of all such public hearings shall be provided to Burt and Tuffer at least seven days in advance of such hearing in the same manner as an abutter in notified pursu pursuant to RSA 676-7-I as may be amended unless Burt and or Tuffer waive such requirement in writing. The notice requirement for each of Burt and Tuffer shall terminate upon their respective deaths or the establishment of their residency outside of Wolfboro. Well, I'm happy to report that John Burt and I are both still alive and we both reside in the town of Wolfboro. And neither one of us has waived uh, such, such requirement. You guys didn't give us seven days notice. That's a violation of this agreement. Now I'd like to move on to the agreement itself. The town agrees that Clark Park will not be used in the future after 2021 for a farmer's market. Farmer's market is defined as a physical retail marketplace intended to sell foods directly by farmers or other vendors to consumers. A farmer's market typically consists of booths, tables or stands where vendors sell their produce, animal products and plants and sometimes prepared foods, beverages, and non-food non items. For the purpose of this agreement, the definition of farmer's market as used herein shall be interpreted liberally to include all similar types of activities, regardless of whether they are advertised or referred to as a farmer's market. Now, rather than argue uh, the definition or what this exactly means, I would now like to refer to a legal opinion by town attorney Mark Puffer on December 5th, 2001, 20 years ago. Now, the letter, uh, I, I left one for each one of you on the table. The letter is boilerplate, description of Clark Park, a town's requirements to use a park, a, a town's prerogatives to use a park. Uh, but I think for, for the, the pertinent point of, of this discussion, I refer to the last paragraph on the second page. Clearly, athletic events of any type would be prohibited under the terms of Greenleaf Clark's will. The issue is whether the allowance of a multi-day craft and antique show in Clark Park would be inconsistent with Greenleaf Clark's directive that the land be ever used and kept for a park or garden for the town of Wolfboro. In my opinion, said Mark Puffer, a multi-day craft and antique show would be inconsistent with the designated use as a park or garden. The proposed use would inevitably interfere with the general public's right to use the property as a park or garden. This is a 20-year-old opinion from our attorney, our town attorney, advising against using Clark Park for a multi-day craft and antique show. Now, an argument can be made that these are single-day antique shows or craft fairs, uh, but there are four of them, and uh, I believe the original one that Mark Puffer was speaking about was a multi-day craft fair, so that's why he referred to it as a multi-day craft fair. In my opinion, Mark Puffer's opinion still carries today. It's a violation of his, the spirit of his letter 20 years ago and I, st I maintain it is a violation of our current agreement with the town of Wolfboro. I'm asking that you do not issue this permit. At the very least, I'm asking you to table it. And if you, if you table it, it would give myself and John Burt time to contact our attorney to discuss this with him and see how we can move forward. If you issue this permit tonight, I can tell you that John Burton and I will be approaching our, t uh, our attorney uh, as soon as we can regarding this issue. Thank you for your time. Yeah, uh, my feeling is that we table it. We table it because we did not give notice. No other reason. 
then the notice was not given. We need to conform to that agreement in terms of notice. All four of them. All four. Yep. Table all four. All four of them because we did not meet the criteria of that um, agreement with them. And I'll make that as a motion. Second. Hey, hang on a minute. We have a motion and a second. You wish to respond to that? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, first of all, this is not a, a big commercial operation. It's not like the Brewster Field, uh, you know, massive amounts of people. We have, you know, 10, 10 uh, vendors at the most. And without the uh, farmer's market there, it's just a very low key thing. It's not going to create a big hubbub in that little area. Secondly, we have a lease on that property uh, where the, Car the Clark Museum is. And we don't have anything in the larger park area at all. There is, a, a, people don't even have tents. They have a little table. Um, it's all local people, local artists, artisans. People bring their you know, stuff from the attic. It's a very small event. And I feel that um, it's kind of in keeping with uh, the, the character of the town, and it's something that people really enjoy. So I, I think that we are being lumped in to a larger argument, and uh, it would be sad not to have them this year. Okay, I have another question in reference to this. It's my understanding that all of what you're talking about and asking for is inside the white fence, Correct. white picket fence area. It's um, not out in the park, if you will? It is not in the park at all. Okay. I thought that made a difference at one point. Brian? Um, how big of an area do you need to have all, ten, what is it, 10 or 12 vendors? We use a, a, a small portion of, of the grounds. Compared to this room? So I would say maybe half the room. Half the room. I have a location you could use. <laughs> well, no, we, the, the whole point is that we did have one here before we were able to open the barn. We, we had uh, <clears throat> one of our first markets right here in this, in this room, but a lot of our vendors are elderly and they had a hard time bringing their stuff upstairs, even though we do have uh, the elevator. You know, we have to haul all the boxes and bins and things. So, um, I just, it's, it's just not, not the same thing. Uh, my motion is not in any way addressing your uh, events. My reason for tabling is we had a written agreement and we were to send them a notice and we didn't do it. I and understand. That is it. So these should come back on after we've given the notice and we should then address the, um, your application for the, temporary event permit, but we have to meet the obligation. So we can't advertise or do anything to get things going in the meantime. That sets us back quite a bit. Sorry, I mean, we didn't, we made a mistake and we didn't do what we needed to do. That's what I can say. So you made the motion, has anybody seconded it yet? I didn't second it yet. I did. It was seconded by Brian. I seconded it. Okay, anybody else? Yes. Kathy Fairman, I'm a member of the Wolfboro Historical Society, and I just want to speak in favor of this. I agree with you that you have to put it off, but I urge you to get it on the on the uh, next selectman's meeting as soon as you can. And I also suggest that we review what the intent of was by Greenleaf Clark. Um, from my understanding of it, that when he gave the Clark House, which is where this is, and this event is designed to bring people to see our museums, our goal to be a museum town, I would point out, this is one of the town-owned museums, and that we need to do everything we can to support and encourage people to come and visit. It is a wonderful story, and that it might be helpful just for the selectmen to um, to take a peek at what the intention was, because it was Greenleaf's intention when he gave that building uh, and that little farm to the town that it would represent and give us a look into our past and our history. And that's what the Historical Society is trying to do. And by bringing in vi vintage um, uh, vendors, um, 
then we're, we're just giving an opportunity. It's an educational opportunity for our kids, and it's the kind of thing we want to encourage. So hopefully maybe we can find a way to get around that, and perhaps the residents might uh, take a second look at that in, in terms of uh, the reasoning behind it. We're trying to encourage history, part of our heritage here in Wolfboro. Thank you. Mr. Buffer. Uh, yes, I have, a, I have a couple of items. First of all, in the agreement, Clark Park is described as uh, having boundaries of South Main Street, Goodrich Road, East Clark Road, and Clark Road. That includes the museum complex. Secondly, uh, I, I don't think we need to revisit the intention of, of uh, Greenleaf Clark uh, with this deed restriction. We have an agreement on this already. Lastly, I would hope that you don't tie yourselves down to doing this at the next Board of Selectments meeting. If you table this, we're going to ask our attorney to reach out to Mark Puffer for opinions, and as you know from last year, this lasted some time to resolve this issue. I believe the first uh, planned uh, uh, fair is in July. I think we have some time to work with this, and I would ask that you not tie yourself down to um, uh, making a decision on this at the next Board of Selectmen meeting. Thank you. Uh, respectfully, we don't have a lot of time. We have a lot of advertising that we need to do, especially because the uh, farmer's market is no longer there, so we need to find our audience. We need to get going on it now. I'm, it, it was a, I was supposed to be on this agenda two weeks ago, and by some error, I wasn't able to, to present at that time, so I'm two weeks behind as it is. So we are backed up, and I hope that we can resolve this issue. And we are under a lease agreement with the town for our little area. And we are not, we should not be involved in the discussion about what Greenleaf wanted to do. We have our little area. We've had uh, the same markets going on for, in fact, they used to have a tiny little flea market here 30 years ago. The, the members of the historical society would come with their attic treasures and, uh, put them out on tables. It's been going on forever. No one ever complained, except for now. And we are not part of the, uh, we will miss the farmer's market, but we're not part of that. And um, I, I urge you to try to get it resolved as soon as you can so that we can get working at our end. Thank you. Okay, we have a uh, <clears throat> motion and a second to table this to our next selectmen's meeting. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. Okay. Brian, you want to start up again? On number? The nine. 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 All right. The Board of Selectmen to open up a um, public event permit discussion for, um, for the board to consider a temporary event permit for the New Hampshire Boat Museum to host a boat safety course for women on June 18, 2022 from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Back Bay Docks off Railroad Road Ave, permit number 2022-41. Hi. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> so this is, an, again, another new program. It's geared toward the novice boater. And it's just, it's going to be um, Jake Marsh from Marine Technology at Laconia Community College is going to teach it. And it's just to give people a basic idea like how to tie up the boat. They won't be docking, but just do not. The boat stops running when you're out on the lake. What do you check first? Those type of things, things you should have on the boat. It's um, a two-hour class. I have it down from 10 to 12, but I do know these are public docks. We could do 9 to 11 if that suits the town better. Um, and we'd just be using one dock space and what it would be, and we would do back bay rather than taking something out front. 
Okay, do we have any public discussions or questions on this? Hearing none, board, do you have any discussions? Yeah, my feeling is whatever time works best for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, 10 to 12 would give Jake okay. a little time to get over here. Okay. But we wanted to be accommodating. Okay. Seeing there was no other discussions, can I have a motion, please? I'll move that we um, approve the temporary event permit for the New Hampshire Boat Museum to host a boating safety course for women on June 18th, 2022, from 10 to 11. Is that 10 to 12? 10 to 12. Okay. 10 to 12 at the Back Bay Docks off Railroad Avenue, permit 2022-41. Do I have a second? Okay, so you have your permit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, what if we vote? Oh, we have to vote. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Luke, you want to take the next one, please? Absolutely. I'll open the uh, next public hearing. This public hearing is the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit for the church, for the Church United to host a national day of prayer on May 5th, 2022, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m at Kate Park. Is there someone here? Justin Marbury representing a group of churches that are putting on this event. Uh, this is the third, this would be the third time that we've done this at Kate Park, starting with 2020 and 2021, and now applying for 2022. Uh, the event is centered on, in the gazebo uh, with some music, and then several pastors leading a time of prayer from the actual event is from noon to one, and so the, the window is for set up and tear down as well. Are there any members of the public that uh, wish to speak to this? Any questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board members? Questions? Would you let, no, I don't have a question. Would you okay. like a motion? I love a motion. <laughs> okay. I move to approve a temporary event permit for the Church United to host a national prayer day of prayer on May 5th, 2022, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Kate, at Kate Park, permit number 2022-42. Second. Okay, motion's been made and second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All righty. Here goes the last one. Good. <laughs> the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen to consider a temporary event permit for veterans count Easter Seals to host a 5K run on August 13th, 2022 from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. at 399 Center Street, Bridge Falls Path, Albee Beach. So, <clears throat> as you know, uh, I am uh, Chief Dean Rondo, and this is a 5K road race that myself and uh, Colonel Ken Lull actually one of my army buddies uh, we put on. This is, I think, the fourth year of us doing this. Uh, both Ken and I sit on the Board of Directors of Veterans Count, which is a division of Easter Seals. Uh, and we raise money for veterans programs to fit in where the VA cannot, either by law uh, or by some other conflict in federal code. And uh, so this is a very uh, worthwhile uh, a fundraiser. It's one that's very successful here in Wolf Bowl. We bring in lots of people. Uh, they enjoy uh, the Albee Beach area uh, when they're done, uh, or they, they go to the uh, various shops and towns and take part. I also, uh, uh, Lisa Beverage, I think, has her uh, craft beer festival going, and there's a, a connection there as well. So this has uh, turned into quite an event. So you have all the documentation, you have the maps, you have the insurance uh, from uh, Veterans Count Easter Seals. Uh, what questions may I ask, uh, answer? I, I just want, can you tell them where it's going to start and how far it's going to go and where it's come back? It's, we have it here, but the public can't hear. Sure. So um, we coordinate with the Boat Museum and we start on actually their property. Uh, and we have two courses. One is a competitive course for all the uh, gazelles out there that want to trail race and run down toward uh, Fernald uh, Crossing and then back again. They don't cross the, the major hardball. And then the other is kind of a fun run walk for those of us who are a little bit slower, older. And, and I usually do the run 
and I'll run down uh, and then turn around at the uh, intersection there, the 28 crossing, and then run back. And uh, it's 5Ks. Uh, so we have two courses going simultaneously. We're really over in about 30 minutes uh, from start to finish. It, it doesn't take that long. Thank you. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to speak to this temporary event permit? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Board members, anything, any questions? Can I have a motion? Yeah, I'll move that the Wolfboro Board of Selectmen consider the temporary event permit for Venture Count East of Seals to host a 5K August 13th, 2022 from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. at 399 Center Street. Bridge Falls Path and Albee Beach, permit 2022-43. Do I have a second? Second. And second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Over to you, Dave. Okay. Continue on. Public input. Anybody have any public input? Yes, sir. Limited to three minutes. Okay. Thank you. I'm Matthew Platch. I'm a uh, Carroll County Commissioner. I wanted to talk a little bit about Whitehorse Recovery. Uh, you all are familiar with Whitehorse Recovery. They provide a service in our community, in our county, that is so critical. Uh, so that providing counseling for substance abuse disorder and for mental health. And we have, we're seeing the substance abuse issues on the increase again with the influx of drugs coming over the, the southern border. Uh, we're seeing mental health issues rising in our county uh, coming out of the pandemic, uh, including with minors. Uh, a lot of underage, you know, a lot of kids that are getting treatment through, through Whitehorse now. Uh, Whitehorse struggles for money. They're a nonprofit. Uh, the, I mean, Wolfboro is giving them, I think, we ended up giving them 5,000, John. Uh, this year, the county is giving them, I think, 140,000 this year, 150,000. I should know that. I thought we reduced it, but uh, we have kind of a, a rule at the county when we give money to, to charities that they shouldn't double dip, they shouldn't come to the towns and get money. So we've asked Whitehorse to start raising, going into the private sector and getting more money, getting more support from the private sector. And they're doing that this year. They're having an inaugural uh, golf tournament that they're gonna be sponsoring, that they're putting on uh, June 20th at the Lake Winnipesaukee Golf Club. And I just wanted to announce that to the community because you know, this will take the burden off the taxpayers and will help them get the money they need to provide the services they provide. So it's a win-win for our community I'd like to, here's a flyer. I'd love it if you guys could put this up in, you know, here at the town hall, uh, put it on the announcement board. Uh, yep. If you're able to. You want to give that to Jim? I'm I'll sure give it we to can Jim. take care of that. Thank you. I, I, you know, I hope to see a bunch of you there if you can come and, and members of the public. So please participate in this. This is, a, this is an important event. No. Have you given it to the Chamber of Commerce to put it on there? Chamber of Commerce? We will. Yeah, because they are a good way yeah. to get information like that out. We're trying to get this out countywide, but you know, because it's in Wolfboro, uh, it's, you know, there's a lot of folks here that might attend, which could be pretty important. And you know, they're providing services now at Huggins. Uh, you know, they're in our community. A lot of their... A lot of the people they serve come from Wolfboro, Conway, Ossipee as well. I have clients that are getting services there. They're doing a great job. Uh, we just would like to see them move off taxpayer money and get, you know, get more private support. So. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments about anything? John? Maybe you have three minutes. That's all I need. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to uh, report back to the board on Senate Bill 249, which we all know is the short-term rental bill. Uh, that passed the uh, Senate by voice vote, and the uh, Speaker of the House assigned the bill to uh, Municipal and County Committee, which is the committee that I serve on. 
Uh, we had a hearing that lasted three hours long. We heard testimony from individuals, businesses, cities and towns, and the New Hampshire Municipal Association. Uh, on Monday, we did what's called the executive session where we voted on, on, the, on the bill, what, what to recommend to the House. Uh, over that weekend, I received about 150 emails and around 75 phone calls over Saturday and Sunday, both in support and against the bill. Uh, as I've told, one of the reasons I'm uh, your representative is I like to keep local control for our community, within our community. Uh, the bill had some good intentions, uh, but as a committee, we felt it didn't quite meet the mark that we needed to do some additional research on the bill itself. So we recommended it to our interim study, uh, and the vote was 17 to 2. So when a, vote, when a vote is at 17 to 2, it goes to what's called the consent calendar, and all the bills where the votes are, say, 20 to 0, 19 to 1, uh, 17, 17 to 2, 18 to 1, those go into a big consent calendar. And we rely on the committees, their judgment from hearing all the testimony, those are good bills, and their recommendation usually weighs quite a bit. So that's where our bill is, uh, where the Senate bill is. So what could happen now is uh, when it's scheduled for a House session, another member of the legislature could go in and pull that bill out of the consent calendar and argue our recommendation on the floor. So 99.9% .9 I feel this is all done for this year. Uh, the chairman of the committee will uh, appoint a subcommittee and we'll study the issue over the summertime. Uh, but right now I feel confident that it's, it's probably just going to be studied this summer. And if there is another bill, it will come up uh, next session in January. Uh, I got a lot of input from uh, you folks, which I appreciated, and uh, from the town planner and from Jim. And uh, I think this is the best thing uh, for the town to go to interim study. I think we've got a lot of good people that serve on the boards, and they can make the decisions for the community. Uh, the big thing is I always look at laws is, what's, if we want to pass a law, what's the minimum we can restriction we can put on the people? And that's what I think all you folks look for also, as far as development or any other, any other type of things. Uh, if you don't have any questions, I'll try to answer your questions. Uh, again, I appreciate any all your input. questions from the board? No, I just want to thank John yeah, for thanks, doing John. that. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to come back and report to us. I'm glad to do it. Brian, do you have a question? Yeah. yeah. Um, just a, a couple quick ones. Um, are, are we concerned about what the, the legislation going for, I mean, the um, court rulings going forward with um, Conway? That's going to be up to the court, and I'm not going to be concerned with sort of what to decide. As my law licensed for Massachusetts' opinion is that they will probably find the ban, the total ban, not acceptable, that there's something else that the, the town of Conway can do to solve the problem that they have. That's just my Massachusetts' opinion. Okay, thanks, John. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Next on our agenda is the bulk vote. This includes weekly manifests, uh, tax credit or exemptions, tent to cut, uh, yield tax levy, property tax refund and abatement, raffle permits. Anybody want to make a motion to approve that? No. Uh I'll make a motion to approve the bulk uh, vote items A through F. Second. Oh. Second. All those, any discussion on it? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next is uh, Board of Committee Appointments. The Energy Committee, Richard Skarnickia, as a member, will expire in March 2025. And is it Michelle? Michael. Michael. Coldenler is an alternate, expires in 2023. Somebody want to make a motion? Anybody here to? Somebody like to make a motion to appoint them, please? Move to appoint Richard Skarinka as member of Energy Committee. Term expires March 2025. Move to appoint Michael Kolodner, alternate member to uh, Energy Committee, term expires March 2023. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Next is Lake Treat and Planning Commission. Roger Murray, member, term expires 2026. And Tavis Austin is a member, term expires 2024. Dave, I'm gonna step down for a okay. 
this one. Okay, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve Roger Murray as a member till 2026 and Tavis Austin as a member to 2024. Second, Second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, new business. Fourth of July parking ban. Is somebody here to talk about that? So this is the um, normal plan that we've been doing the past uh, few years with the parade uh, relative to shutting down um, parking in the downtown area. Uh, basically, the, the rationale behind this is for safety for um, uh, pedestrians to be able to watch the, the parade uh, better and not have any concerns about vehicles. Um, Chief, do you have anything else you want to add relative to the parking ban on the 4th of July? Yeah, this is, a, <clears throat> this is really no different than uh, anything we did in uh, 2019. I think we're asking for the entire route this time to uh, have the parking ban. The other thing, uh, and we just did an EOC meeting today, uh, and uh, some, of the, some of the members here were, were on that uh, meeting, one of the things that the fire chief did talk about was a, a, another variant, though. Uh, we don't think it's any worse than the Omicron. I don't have a name for the new variant. But removing the vehicles, uh, especially now where we're coming out of a COVID uh, environment, is good because it gives people an opportunity to spread out even more, and it gives us more room and space, which is what we really need down there. Of course. We're doing this uh, to uh, increase the line of sights to make sure we don't have a uh, pedestrian vehicle collision uh, or, or any near misses. So this, this is, you know, there's a variety of good reasons why we're doing this. We're not trying to be difficult or, or create any, any issues where it's really all about public safety at this point. But the antidotal piece to this is that it gives us room to spread out, which I think we really need right now, and, and we want to do that. Yes, sir. Um, can we put in front of the town hall um, handicapped parking spots for people that need to park close to watch the parade and maybe a line behind the town hall the same way? Because some handicapped spots in town will be closed off because of the parking ban. And we'd, we'd like... I, I, think, I, I think you can do whatever you want. You're a selectman. <laughs> Um, I think if you read the memo, there is a talking yeah. about the possibility of the town hall lot being used for those who uh, cannot walk or have accessibility problems yeah. and to put a, um, uh, they can use the bathrooms here at the town hall. And maybe if we could let them come in until about 9.15. That's correct. They, and, and therefore they can sit here, right, and no cars and everything. Correct. And, and, but we're going to need the police to kind of monitor that. And yeah, we will. Maybe coordinate we'll, off and, and we will. We'll, we'll we'll do everything we can uh, to make sure those with uh, walking impairments and and and, and so forth that uh, they get to where they need to be and they're allowed to park where they need to to park. We'll make sure that we do every year. Because yeah. in front yeah. of the if 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 the police don't know about it, people will just park there. Well, right. well, we'll 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 get that out as part mm -hmm. of the advertisement for this, and I I think that because I know there's some people who just they're not handicapped, but they just can't walk that far, and if right. they can come into a right. spot, they're older, and we That's can correct. put chairs anywhere, so they can bring their chairs and stuff. And we certainly want them to enjoy the parade as well. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Okay, I'd like a motion to approve that uh, parking ban and also the. The handicap issues that we just discussed. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Next is discussion of actual versus budget report. Good evening, Kathy Carpentier, Finance Director. Um, it's hard to believe that uh, the first quarter of 22 is already over. Um, the town of Wolfboro was very gracious and approved our operating budget and all the warrant articles. So March was a very busy um, month for the department heads uh, starting the projects up because they do wait for the vote. Um, so we had a lot of um, purchasing and contracting going on in March. 
However, um, the reports that I ran are only a 30 percent, um, which is slightly above a three-month average of 25 percent. Um, some of the things I do want to make note of, we haven't yet um, paid out the ag agency fees um, to uh, the budgeted um, groups. We have not given the money to the trustees of the trust fund. We kind of wait till like May, June when the tax money start rolling in to do some of that. Uh, so the spending's a little low there. We also, um, the revenues, especially for water and sewer, um, I reported to you are nine and eight percent respectively. Um, however, that's a little misstated because of um, we're expecting a lot of grants and loans in, so it just looks less. Um, the water charges are at 24 percent, and the sewer sales are at 19 percent. So they're right on target, but yet um, the gross number of revenues for water and sewer look um, very low. Uh, I also gave you a copy of the MS9 report, which is a, a monthly report that the trustees of the trust fund do, so you know um, how much is in the capital reserve funds and a donation reconciliation. So um, I don't have any uh, areas of concern at this point, um, and I'd be, um, I'm willing to answer any questions you may have. I, I have, and I've already written to you, I have some concerns about our legal uh, well, how we're uh, printing out the legal and how we're equating it to the different departments. But I will say I want to thank you for this report. I really like the fact that we get the trustees. And when I went to look at that water, if I go into the budget, it's there for me to see that we're uh, sending out bills, that it is those other items. So that I found that very helpful. Um, and for... It's hard, really, in the first quarter to really get a sense of where we are. But I thank you for those things, and um, hopefully we will work on that legal. Yes. Um, I, and, you know, I always like to try to make it better. I think I will put two revenue numbers down, you know, just, just to make it clearer so it doesn't look like water's at 9%, yeah. um, and it's being distorted because the grants and loans have not come in yet. Um, and I'd be... Happy to meet with you on the legal or you <laughs> in Jim and I. Do you have any questions? Oh, sorry. I'm already uh, Casey, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Have a good Thanks. night. Thank you, Casey. Next on the agenda is a discussion of Plan New Hampshire Charette update. Thank you very much. Maggie Steer, Chair, Heritage Commission. I'm on the agenda for three items. I hope I can just stay here and go through them. Um, last night I um, presented to the planning board the results of the Plan New Hampshire Charette, um, and I believe you all received a copy. Um, my presentation last night to them lasted more than a half an hour, and I'm guessing you probably don't want to have me talk that long. So I'll try to just give you the highlights here and then my request for future action. Um, first of all, I want to say we were really fortunate to have our application to Plan New Hampshire accepted. This was um, an unusual event for them because it was the first one they did after COVID, so the first in-person charrette. They had a huge team of um, about 20 people, and we had a huge area to cover um, here in town. Um, so all of that is summarized in the beginning pages. The recommendations that this team of outside experts made are meant to be general and of an overarching nation, nature. Really just a vision of what these outsiders saw in our town and some ideas for us to consider. So implementation is completely in the hands of the community. On page seven, you'll see the concerns that were expressed by town employees and town officials on page eight, um, what the team heard from residents, um, along with great pictures of all the, the folks who came in and shared concerns. Um, and then nine and 10, a summary of the history of the town, including a couple of recommendations which snuck in there, um, talking about um, the idea of perhaps extending the rail trail all the way out to Dockside, where it was historic, where the train tracks historically ran. And I'm thinking of how the community of Hanover designates that the Appalachian Trail runs through their town with bricks in the sidewalk, right through the middle of town. 
So that's something we might think about in the long term. Um, and then the other thing that was so interesting to me was the history of the municipal electric building, which began life in that very rear portion as the place that generated the power for the gigantic shoe factory. And then the shoe factory burned, was reconstructed, um, diesel power, or not diesel, but um, mechanical, some sort of power was added. And then finally, when the town took it over, the front part was added. And of course, the shoe factory is gone, but that building stands there um, as evidence of what used to be. There were um, four teams dividing the town into four sections. And so you'll see that on page 11, the four project areas, and then recommendations followed. So just to give you a few highlights, in the downtown and alongside of Back Bay to Foss Field, they proposed two options for Railroad Avenue, including closing it off to create a pedestrian plaza or simply eliminating parking from one side of the street to allow more space for pedestrians, for gathering, for bicycles. They heard from a lot of people how congested it does get in the summer months particularly. They also heard that um, the customers of Bradley's would be very upset if they couldn't park out front and load in all the big bulky items they like to buy there. Um, but it's something to think about. Perhaps even adding just a loading zone in front of Bradley's might eliminate some of that congestion. So um, I'm not ruling anything out, some, although at first um, pass, I think a lot of people would say that's a crazy idea. Um, Beyond Bradley's, where the town docks are opposite the train station, the suggestion was made to reduce parking there as well and expand the green space so that there's more of a view of the water for those um, many people who start their visit to Wolfboro at the train station. Uh, moving back along the rail trail, a suggestion to add a pocket park and plantings that would screen the electrical substation maybe um, putting sculpture there, adding a bike rack and a fix-it bike station, um, trails around the perimeter of Foss Field, not just along one side, could use enhancement so that you could access the tenant's courts um, from the rail trail as well as from the parking lot behind Harvest Market. And um, in service to that, adding a separate trail around the other side of the field, replacing the plank that's there now with a real footbridge, and you'll see an illustration of that on page 16. There was also consideration mentioned of opening up the, um, a, a little bit of a connector um, from the municipal parking lot to Laner Street via the road that exists by Silva Dentistry, and that was sketched in. Um, and I think maybe it was Linda who said there used to be a roadway there. Someone told me that, maybe at the planning board last night. Um, then we moved to Laner Street on page 18. A lot of um, what the team saw and heard there related to the two town-owned buildings, including the Municipal Electric Building and the um, old community station. The Girl Scouts came and presented. Um, the team felt very strongly that the historic character of that street be protected, um, that it remain mixed use, but that the size and scale of what's built um, would be in keeping with what is already there. Um, this was the team that heard the most about the need for affordable housing in town, and yet they also recommended no large-scale industrial housing. And if you look at their um, rendering on the bottom of page 20, you can see that they do show a second story added to the former Sanal building, but with a step back, so it's not a huge, tall, imposing um, front to the building right on the sidewalk. And they considered some additional infill for housing there. Again, same size and scale as what's on the street. And then down at the far end towards Center Street, there were some other suggestions made about how that intersection might be reworked. Um, let me see. 
Um, in terms of recommendations, they, I, I did hear from the planning board that they're working on um, inclusionary zoning, density um, revisions, that kind of thing. So those were recommendations that were um, put squarely on their shoulders and they are addressing them. Um, we move forward to connecting Center Street, this is section three, um, and the commercial district, both with the downtown and enhancing the way that area of town feels. feels. So enhancing parking and recreation opportunities, maximizing the vibrancy um, and improved pathways, expanding the capacity of the existing parking lot was drawn out. Um, the, the playground that's there would need to be relocated, so that was something they thought we might want to consider. And then at the junction of Center Street and, um, sorry, and Laner Street, and you'll see that on page 24. They did sketch some new infill, looking both at the vacant Zimmerman lot across the street and at the opportunities that might accrue to the former Wolfboro Oil Building um, and when and if Eastern Propane decides that that may become available. Um, they also talked um, in this report about transportation improvements on Center Street and the engineers, some of whom were from DOT, sketched out two new roundabouts. <laughs> Again, I know roundabouts are a touchy subject and yet they had fun doing it and they um, put it in the report so that we might give some thought to that. The Route 28 study committee is also looking at these intersections and Obviously, work was done at the junction of Laner and Center Street recently to try to improve sight lines, and I think that's made a big difference. So some of these are gonna end up on um, a little bit higher on the priority list than others. Um, I would say that their postscript um, on page 28, economic and development considerations, is definitely worth considering. Find, urging us to find ways to be proactive as development pressure and new investment continue to grow. Maybe the town can find ways to control what's get, get, what gets built by buying properties, placing development easements, et cetera, to make sure that the vision that we have for how our town grows is implemented more effectively. Next steps. Um, I talked with the Heritage Commission about this and the Planning Board, and I'd like, with your permission, to go further and to talk to other town departments and other boards and commissions, such as Economic Development and Parks and Rec, and have them help to prioritize the recommendations in the report so that then we can come together and have a synthesis of what um, the people who are in a position to make these things happen think, have a public hearing, share those ideas, and then um, with a new steering committee work to try to monitor progress and assist in any way we can for implementation. So I hope that um, you will agree to appoint a committee. I have Kathy Eaton lined up to serve on such a committee and Roger Murray has agreed. Someone from the Heritage Commission and someone from the Planning Board. Our steering committee also included Denise Roy Palmer, who's retiring, and Christine Collins, who may agree to serve, um, and uh, Tavis, of course, from the Planning Department. So I guess that's my request to you for that. If you could help to assure that this lovely report doesn't just sit on a shelf but gets some traction and we begin to think uh, about what we want to do relative to what was discussed and recommended. Yeah, I, when I went through it, I thought it was uh, abbreviated nicely so you could understand you know, what, what they went through. I like a few of the concepts, don't like all. That's why we have discussions, I guess. Uh, but I think, yeah, whoever did, the, who did the, um, the two people who, who were, who put this together, the two people who were the, the um, lead 
leaders okay. of the charrette. So it was um, the guy from Fuss and O'Neill, Brian Pratt, and I'm just looking down here who the other person was. Brian Pratt and Jamie, Brian Pratt from Fuss and O'Neill and Jamie Simchik from Simchik Planning and Development, yeah. and they did the whole thing for us. I thought it was nicely done. I, don't want to I, I thought it was very nicely done, and, and it gives us something to work from. Um, and we have, it, it gives us a lot of opportunity to do away with parking, and therefore we better come up with another parking lot. Yeah. That was my feeling. <laughs> That's our challenge, because parking to garage. do that, we're going to have to find spaces for the, all those cars. But interesting concepts, I thought. Yeah, that's what yeah. I mean. I thought it was done so that discussions could be having, had in the future easily. That's you, what I saw. All of you, all of the town committees and all of the town staff work so hard on the nitty gritty that it was nice to just have a chance to step back and think at the 30,000 foot level a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Any questions from the board at this point? I just Make one other quick comment. You know, Maggie gave us a much more detailed um, presentation last night. And one thing to keep in mind, too, is that when, when the, you know, the groups all got together and did the report here, that it's kind of their job to put all ideas on the table, mm -hmm. even though some of them we look well, at and say, you know, that's not going to happen, whatever they are. But it's to just to provoke the thought process and, and things like that. So um, yeah. I thought it came out very good, and I was very impressed yeah. with, the, with the final result. And... Uh, is really something to look at and yeah I think you're right Brad that's what I get out of it too yeah. but it was well done it was Arky. it was a it was a good summary in my opinion you didn't have to read through this big, thick pages to understand what they were trying to do that's what I thought any other questions okay thank you okay and are you here to deal with the Heritage Commission as well yes that's next Okay. Discussion I, of the Heritage Commission annual barn easement update. Okay. Um, typically, the Heritage Commission has done the annual monitoring visits of our four barn easements on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. I hope you will ask us to do it again this year. Um, yeah. Do I hear yes. a yes? Yes. 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 Excellent. <laughs> Great. Um, we have um, members who are assigned to the individual barns, and I've already asked them to set up those visits. One of the barns is being sold, and that's the 1810 house. Thanks to Cindy Melanson on our commission, she got in touch with the owner. I've had a lovely exchange with him. He's thrilled to know that there's a barn easement on the property. And so the benefits of the tax abatement accrue to him, as does the easement. It just transfers with the sale of the property. But he's very happy to have that in place. Um, we have others who are going to be reaching out to the other three barns. Um, Browns Ridge Road is one at Browns Farm. Um, the barn on Cotton Mountain that belongs to Bob Norton and Ruth Sexton and then the former bittersweet barn on Center Street. And I hope you all have noticed that there is a lot of work taking place there. Yes. So we'll give you a full report. I know I promised that a while ago and then nothing happened. And I thought, we know he's going to try. He had told us he would try to get a contractor. So I'm very happy that's underway. Okay. Any questions? No, I've noticed the work at I deal a bit of sweet. Yeah, he's done quite a bit there. Nice to see. All right, next on our agenda is the discussion update warrant article 24, townwide historic resource study. Correct. So um, voters were very generous, and now we have the money to engage a preservation consultant to do a townwide historic resource survey. Um, we will be using Lisa Mossoff who also happens to be the same consultant that the State Department of Transportation is using for the Route 28 study, um, which is great, because she'll have a head start on some of the work, and maybe we can get her to look more intensively at some other areas of town, because she won't have to do that. She um, was going on vacation when I reached her a week or so ago. She said she'd get me a contract as soon as she gets back. That will have to be signed by you, the selectman, I assume, or. Um, the town manager, 
and then she would start sometime mid to late summer. So we're very happy about that. And I have one more thing I'd like to say, if I may. Um, both the Heritage Commission and the Conservation Commission took a vote last week to endorse the um, acquisition effort of the Berry Mill property by the land bank of Wolfboro and Tuftonboro. And you may have heard something about this, you may not, many people watching may not have heard about it, but um, there is a signed purchase and sales agreement for that property to be purchased for conservation. And the Heritage Commission is working on an inventory form that chronicles its history. Um, we will be working on an LCHIP grant in concert with the Conservation Commission to try to help fund some of the purchase and hopefully get it listed to the state register. So just wanted you to know that's what the Heritage Commission has been up to. Hey, thank you. Okay, next, uh, anything else? Uh, any questions for Maggie? Okay. Thank next you. on the agenda you, is the update SP 249 sh short term rentals. Uh, so, Dave, that I, took place I think, by John McDonald. Right, that's what I was assuming. <laughs> yep. yep. Okay. Uh, Board of Selectmen committee assignments. Easiest thing to do for this next year would be if we stay in the assignments we had. I don't know if anybody has some real problems. I would like to remove the Friends of the Town Hall since they disbanded, so okay. we can eliminate that. And I'm willing to stay in all the other positions, but I'm also willing to be the planning board alternate. Roger is no longer an attorney. It's I haven't had any opportunity to go on in, and that's a blank position, so if nobody else wants it, I'm willing to do that. Anybody else have any issues with? Well, I'm happy to doing? stay with the committees okay. in the past. All right, well, we'll uh, Jim, if you want to have Amy at some time, you make up a, another sheet like this. Yep. So that we all understand. We will get that done. Okay. Uh, next uh, public hearing date to accept bike trails on town property. So we were hopeful to have a site walk um, of, of the uh, bike trails at the Abenaki facilities. Um, however, the weather was not terribly cooperative and in the interest of safety that was postponed. Therefore, I, I think this topic is um, muted until such time that we can okay. meet, which I believe, I think, I think we're scheduled for the, the 29th of April. Yeah, 11. Okay, next is... Well, uh, can, I do, can we just give, we need to do a license agreement, and there are a few things that I would like to see if we could get. And so one of it is their 990, their tax return. All nonprofits file those. Um, there was also 40000 that came from the Pathways Committee that was given to um, the uh, um, Wolfboro Alliance, and it was to take care of Sewell Woods and um, the um, Albee Trail. And I'd like to know how they're going to split that. Linda, can I, can I interject for one second? Absolutely. You I, I talked to um, Wedco and found out, um, tried to find out what, how that 40000 was transferred. Wedco had collected the money on behalf of mm -hmm. the, um, the Trailways Path Pathways Committee. Pathways Committee. Yep. And then um, I asked them how the money was distributed to Single Track Alliance, and they said they were given the approvals from... Um, the, the Pathways Committee, yep. to give the money to the Single Track Alliance. However, like you just stated, it has been earmarked for specific things, just for Sewell um, Woods Stone Dust Trails and for um, the, the, tr the trails at Abernathy, the ones that were I approved mean, by, the, by the board in, yep. what, 2008. Yep. Um, but there is there's no way to know how much of that 40,000 is left and where it is. Um, and it's, it's something that I think that they should be very transparent with 
especially because I walk um, Sewell Woods trails all the time. I've actually talked to Dave Mallard there, and I use a, a leaf blower and clear about a mile and a half to two miles of trails every year, spring and fall, to keep the debris off the trails. There are places where those trails need some work, um, and um, when Single Track Alliance went into Sewell Woods and made bike trails without permission from the Lakes Region Conservation Trust, they then had to create an MOU with Lakes Region Conservation Trust, and part of their MOU says that they're supposed to be maintaining those stone dust trails. They're supposed to be using that $40,000. This is something that I think that we have to find out where that money is and what it's being used for, because it was airmarked and donated for a specific cause and a specific reason. Yeah, and when that Pathways Committee went out and did their Pathways, they raised money for what they called was an endowment. And that's what that 40000 was to be able to maintain them. The other one is I, I would like some kind of a statement that is clear about the single track's commitment and ability to maintain and do major upgrades. Let's see if we can get agreement on that. Uh, and the other thing that's very important is to understand that these are town trails and we have control over how they're used, when they're used. And those are the main things I, I felt. If anybody else has anything um, in that license agreement, I'm assuming we'll, we'll get that license agreement before we schedule any public hearing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, right now they're probably not. probably about, draft is about half done now. Yeah. Right, okay. right now, they're not bound to us by anything. If they decided that, oh, it would be easier for us to go create trails in Tufton Borough, they could transfer all their funds, including the $40,000, and, 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 you know, decide that there's a better area that's easier that's maybe uh, Hersey Park or, or the, the Hersey property uh, up in Tufton Borough. So we want to make sure that, that, that if they're going to be building things here, they're going to be maintaining them. shouldn't be the taxpayers' dollars. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, moving along. Town ordinance update. <clears throat> so, so we talked about this um, last year, and we we had some conversations about moving forward um, with increases to um, the usage of the Libby Dock, um, and we never really followed through and executed um, a decision relative to that. Um, and as well, some of the changes that we made relative to the short-term um, drop-off pickup sites were only temporary. So we've got to get those um, more solidified, get the signage um, up with the new docks in place. Um, so the thought about scheduling a public hearing relative to that um, and getting this stuff clarified and cleaned up. Um, thoughts from the board, please. Yes, and are we going to get a permit for the uh, commercial vehicles? Because as far as I can tell, uh, have you, uh, Luke, have you gotten a permit? No. And my son didn't. I don't think we've done anything as a town to, or there's no permit on the um, website. Um, because that is the only commercial dock that you can load and unload a commercial barge. Um, and it, it's specific to that. And then if we were to charge $25, nobody spent $25. Yeah, so Amy has no record of collecting anything relative to it. So, you know, we, we haven't followed through with it. Um, so, you know, I think the question becomes, you know, do we increase this incrementally? Do we give it one big increase and... In, and see what happens. I, I think the question comes forward. You know, we spent um, thirty thousand dollars on repairs to that seed wall. We spent thirty thousand uh, dollars last year or year before on repairing the the boat launch. Um, and we've got work that needs to be done on on the dock itself. Um, you know, and can we create a revolving fund to, to pay for that moving forward? <coughs> for how many years have has it been that we were supposed to be collecting fees? Well, we'd have to go back and find <coughs> well, out when yeah. we Yeah, I mean, this, this was the... dated 2000 or 1994, and I, I you know, yeah, I, I can't find years. anything. So. 
I personally would, with the amount of work that we have to do, and, and particularly, maybe Luke, can you can give us more information, that commercial dock is pretty beaten <coughs> up. It is. I mean, I think, you know, there's, there's a couple of things going on down there. I think that was fixed probably eight to nine years ago. Uh, I think I gave Amy a list of, I think, 12 yes, large companies we that have use that, that uh, pretty regularly. Uh, it is like one of the only commercial landings, so it's a, it's a, it, it's the only connection to the islands, you know, for the barge companies that on the pretty much on this side of the lake. There's nothing else uh, in Wolfboro, Tuftonboro. We got to go into Horilla Landing for anything else. Uh, you know, that dock's not bubbled. That's because the snowmobile trail is right there, so it really does take a beating during the winter, especially if the ice moves around and hits it right. But and I know, and me and Mr. Ford spoke about this, and it was probably three or four years ago now. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned going forward with the with the, a dramatic fee increase, uh, so that the town could, you know, uh, pool money every couple of years so that the ramp could be repaired, the dock could be repaired. And I know, you know, from a personal point of view, there's within reason. There's really no amount of money that could be charged that's going to prevent people from saying no because it's so much value to have that from from a commercial point of view. For the for the people that use it, so that's that's where I come from. I mean, I don't want to spend any more money personally, but hey, like it, it's there's a huge value to that, and it's a huge value to the town too. So it's an asset that we need to protect. Agreed. Luke, is it? Oh, right. go ahead. Yeah, if I remember right, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Luke. When we talked about that, like you'd thrown a number out, to like around three thousand dollars a year for the barge company to do that, and if there's like ten or twelve of them. And you know that'd be you know thirty thousand dollars plus a year that could come in to a uh, you know capital reserve fund that would be available, as Luke said, to do the maintenance, the repairs. Money would be there. We wouldn't have to go to town meetings and ask for for money and stuff. Um, we'd be able to you know be on a regular schedule there for the ramp because I mean that's obviously going to take. It's not going to last as long as like the ramp downtown because. The type of usage it's going to get it's not going to last there 20 20 years or whatever so um you know i like that idea um and you know definitely you know luke's got a lot of information and a lot of you know, feel for what these companies uh, would be willing to do and stuff and not make it you know cost prohibitive put it that way but something that would give us enough to to work with to you know keep that maintained there so Okay. So if, if you want, I can we can schedule that public hearing yep. for the next board meeting. Sure. Um, we'll reach out to the the barge companies, let them know that it's coming, um, and you know yeah, contemplate see, see if, the the increases. See if we can't get a few barge companies here, maybe to say what happens in other towns. I know we've looked at other towns, but I don't know. I don't remember any numbers that we ever got for well, commercial barge. Uh, Application. Some of them have their own land. I know. Mm -hmm. Their own I mean, property. I, th I think that regardless of, I think that people will come and, you know, you can get a feel for it. I think the town needs to decide how much. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a step thing over a couple of years. I don't know. Maybe look at how much the dock has cost to repair the last ten years and the ramp because it's been repaired twice, uh, and the seawall has just been completely repaired. You know, I think if you can look at those those things and say, you know, how do we set aside enough money over three or four years to be able to, to rebuild those? And I think along with that goes establishing, you know, after that gets done, maybe it, it needs to be more clear to the general public, too, that that's a dual use ramp and that there's sometimes when, you know, Two there's hours. a barge there that, you know, it's uh but more signage there would be very helpful. Yes, and I think mm -hmm. there's signage issues in that whole right. area in terms of parking. We should definitely look at the signage. Yep. I, I agree with you. Luke, um, is is there electric there that could support a bubbler, and would would it be advantageous to have a bubbler there to protect the dark in the winter? There, there is no electric right there now, but you have to remember to this that is like one of the major accesses for snowmobiling. Coming off Mirror Lake, it comes right down there. A lot of people use that as a mechanism to get on the ice in the winter too. Uh, so it does take the brunt of the of the ice. You know, for a couple of years it did really well. I think this winter it got hit pretty good. So 
I would like us to, to do the public hearing. I'd like us to have a price. I think we should let them know what we're looking at. I can go. Uh, I don't think we should go lower than a thousand, and I can go up as high as three with with Brad. Um, so I think I think your idea of kind of looking at the expenses and putting it off X number of years, and you got twelve. How long would it would it take for us to be able to keep that stock and deal with it? Yeah, and I, I think and I, Luke will know this better than I, I will. Um, but you know, do we make that a a permit? Um, Per um, barge or per company, because uh, I think that needs, we need to clarify that within the ordinance as well. I would say per company. How many companies have multiple barges? And even if they do, I mean, it's I think per company personally. I mean, I think you guys got to decide the fee without me being involved in that portion of it. But uh, you know, one, it's the 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 fee, whatever it is. Uh, is going to be paid, and you know, as opposed to doing it on a per landing basis, because I think that'd yeah, be very that, hard to track. Whatever the fee is, it is, and I think, by and large, I think everyone kind of uses it almost the same. Some companies use it a little bit more than others, but you know, I, I think if it gets out there, I, I don't, I don't see, I can't see any company balking about it because it literally is, it's, it's such a huge asset for for those in the industry to be able to use it, and and the island people as well, because. You know, you have all different stuff going out of there, and you know, you have the occasional pontoon boat that goes out with stuff too. But you know, for so, major barges, this yeah. is. So, do you fine. think Watermark uses it as much as, say, a, a Wolfboro company like Beckwith? Absolutely. Okay. And I, I also would like a sticker that we get put on the boat, yep. so it's, you know, if we can go down there, or public mm -hmm. works can go down there, and if we have people who are uh, not yep. getting our sticker. Correct. Last question, Luke. Do you know of any small barge company that this would be a much bigger hit on them than a, a larger company that does a lot of work? Are there any small that only use it a couple of times a year? I, I, I can't think of any. I, I mean, and, and if you're doing work on the lake, whatever the fee is, it's the resource to have that. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. And I think everyone that goes in and out there knows that, you know, that it's a resource, and they also want to protect it too. But you know, you're bringing in a hundred thousand pounds, you know, here and there. You're going to be hitting the ramp. You know, people dock the dock sometimes. Boats too. Uh, I mean, it, it's a resource you got to pay for. All right. You'll so, do you guys have a number you'd like to start at for the year twenty twenty two? Get like, it done. I like Brad's. You know? <laughs> Brad, we'll, 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 get, we'll say to everybody, Brad told us to do it. <laughs> there you go. Well, Brad's up there, too, where he can watch it. Yeah, yeah right. I can monitor now that he's it. Completely That's retired. right. We are a patrol person. Yeah. You know. Okay. As the other part of that was the update on the annual beach stickers. What's the story on those, Jim? Where are we getting? Oh, um, so we... we um, in the next segment, we'll be talking about where we'll be able to get beach stickers. Beach stickers will be available, I believe it's May 1st. Um, and we've got some uh, decisions that we've got to make this evening relative to uh, Parks and Rec administration and where, where their home is going to be over the next uh, several months. You're also going to take care of the trailer um Park for the boats for like mass landing, we let them and move them to another site. So we're, we'll we're, we're I'm working with. I've had some preliminary conversations with uh, Dave Ford about being able to locate the trailers instead of putting them out to Pop Whale and possibly being able to put them at um, the Filter Bed Road location um, where he wants to do the parking lot. There was originally some um, interest from. Uh, the contractor doing the Taylor community um, work about wanting to use the site and and dump some fill there, um, but that has since changed, so that's no longer in play. Um, so I've got to have a follow-up conversation with Dave. That just happened, but um, we're hopeful that we'll be able to do mass landing as, or excuse me, the filter bed road as some trailer parking. Okay. That's uh, to 
be announced later? Yes, under the next item. Okay. Discussion, pop oil and ice art center construction update. So I've got a little bit of a little slideshow that I'll, I'll go through here um, for the people at home. Um, we are under construction at Pop Whalen. Um, it is moving along quite um, quickly. Let me just get this up on the screen. Um, and my hopes are to provide you with a um, update once a month. Are you able to put that up on the screen? Um, I'll, I'll get into the, the budget while he's working on it. Um, so at, at this time, um, the contract with CCI is for six point two million eight hundred and three thousand nine hundred and thirty-two dollars, um, which means we have for outside services services outside the contract um, and contingencies. Uh, $689,000 for a total warrant article amount of $6.9 million. Funds used to date are uh, $539,000. Uh, $934, leaving a balance of $6.4 million. Uh, this is broken out into this, these two sheets that you'll see. Um, we're getting weekly requisitions from CCI. Um, uh, you can see those broken out here along with um, services outside of the contract, which was uh, we actually brought in a contractor to take the uh, boards down. They're professional in, in doing that, and they, they were in and out of there in no time um, and took them, the boards off site, and they're being stored, and they'll be back to put them in. Um, again, it'll be another probably 18,000 to reinstall the boards. Um, the construction has been moving at a, a feverish pace. You will see here um, some pictures relative to um, the construction or uh, dismantling of the building. Um, when they pulled the, the skins off the building um, and the roof off, um, it wasn't a terribly difficult job because the screws had been through their life cycle and there wasn't a whole lot of um, hold down left to them. Uh, so the, the building is basically um, down to a skeleton. And then today, um, we actually got more pictures, which I'll get to in a second. This, here's a picture of the chiller. That chiller is going to be going away. Um, it's going to be on a standalone structure. Um, but this, this block building will remain um, and this block building will get, it, it'll be expanded out here as well in the plan. Um, today, they had cranes on site and they were taking down the superstructure. So the building is basically at this point um, gone. We, we've paid for um, a large portion, portion of the steel building. Um, I believe it's, it's uh, 16 weeks, I think it was. Um, they're anticipating the building to arrive. Um, and they are moving right along. They are actually um, ahead of schedule at this point, which is great. Um, so with that said, um, as you could see by those pictures, there's a lot of um, congestion that's happening at that site. Um, that con congestion um, combined with the fact that we learned a lot about how the Abenaki Lodge uh, receive power and receives um, plumbing. It comes from the um, arena. Well, with what's happening at the re arena right now, there's no ability to pump the, the sewer um, to the fields. There's no ability to power um, anything in the lodge at this point. Um, and it's really a hazard for people going there um, with this type of construction going on. So at this point, what we've done is we've put um, Porta Johns at the, the, the lodge, so people who are using the trails still have access um, 
to the facilities. Um, and we are asking the board to consider allowing us to place an office trailer at the Foss Field Pavilion. Um, this picture shows two options. The red option puts it in, puts a 40-foot uh, trailer in the parking lot. Problem with that location is it's not easily uh, serviced by power. Um, we looked at the placing it at the blue lo blue spot. Um, again, it fits in that area nicely. Um, it allows for bathroom facilities to be used by Park and Recreation Administration um, in the pavilion. The trailer itself does, is not equipped with them. Um, and it allows for easy hookup to um, power. Um, the one drawback to this particular location, and we're actually working with some vendors now, um, there is a young tree that is right smack in the middle of where this trailer would land. Um, and we're seeing what the expense would be to relocate that young tree. Um, so what we would like to know is if the board has any problem with us locating um, an office trailer um, for the duration of the pop whale and construction at this site. Um, and we have been through, um, had a discussion with Tavis in planning and zoning and he said there's no issues relative to that. Um, and we're working on the, the logistics of electrical. Brian? Just a, a question, I had a thought. Um, could you put a generator at the Abenaki Lodge and power up the lodge? Would that be less money or mo more money than renting a trailer for them and having them use Foss Field? So there was actually a discussion about utilizing the generator, um, but the problem still becomes with all the heavy equipment located in there. Um, quite frankly, the construction company doesn't want people in and out. Okay. We could locate a trailer at... Um, that location, but we would locate it outside of the construction zone um, by where the pump station is for the um, sprinkler and snow making. Yeah, I, I think this is a great idea to put it down there and it also is kind of a pilot for us. You know, we're talking about a community center and it would not be nice to see how it worked having our park and rec department office down downtown area so it will provide I think a better spot and it also will give us a little pilot on what it's like to have park and rec down and how the community would like to have it down there. Is that a go ahead Brad. Yeah um, to that point you can even take a step further um, it's going to be during the summertime too where just about all of the programs everything the parks and rec mm -hmm. is running is out in that Foss Field area so it, it puts them in a better location to be near where they're going to be, you know, having most of their activities going on for the summer season and stuff. So uh, I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to go down there. And I, I, you know, Jim and I had talked earlier too about um, the tree removal and stuff. And you know, for the if we can transplant it for reasonable fee, that's fine. If not, when we're all done and said, you know, we buy another small tree and put back in that spot afterwards and stuff it's not it's not huge money in the scope of what we're what we're doing there so um, I think we could get through that little part of the issue fairly easily well I heard a motion by Linda and seconded by Brad <coughs> to okay the location of the temporary office in the blue rectangle down next to the pavilion is that what I heard you are absolutely That's right. Okay. right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Jim, Perfect. We'll get, set? we'll get on that. Um, we'll get the contract signed tomorrow. I believe for, for a year it was about $9,000, which we'll be able to absorb. So, um, wonderful. Thank you. Schedule a work session, discuss accepting private roads. So, um, I'd like to be able to schedule a work session with the board, um, with David Ford present, to be able to sit down. Um, discuss, we, we put a warrant article forward, um, see if the voters wanted to bring on another person, another truck, um, to entertain the concept of taking on new roads. Um, the voters clearly said yes. Um, we've gotten some feedback from some of those people on those private roads, 
saying they have in some interest. I've been working through some draft documents for um, the practice of taking on um, public roads. I've had some conversations with Dave. Dave feels that we need to come in front of the board as well um, in a work session format to try and lay everything out in advance. Um, and get everybody kind of on the same page so that we can move forward in a unified front. Um, kind of like to hear back from the board as to um, if you're interested in that and when you might want to do such a uh, <clears throat> workshop. I think most of our workshops in the past have been usually done on Wednesday nights and alternate Wednesdays because that takes us with, with all of us going to different board meetings. Wednesday seems to be the only night that the five of us usually don't have something going on. So it would make sense if we could do it on a Wednesday night, Jim. Okay. So you, the next meeting, maybe you could bring some dates to us and we could. Uh... Yeah. I, I... Are we still going to be doing um, the bike trail meetings on Wednesday nights too? Probably. Well, but we, I think we have to do the site visit. Right. Do that so we've got a little time before we'll get another one of those meetings. Okay. Yes, yeah. I thought it would be a lot in one day to do a work session for that and then another trail no, meeting. No, I think. No, I, I don't think it would go that way. I think it'll be spread out more. Yeah. So we have what, time. We have time on that. I mean, my looking at my schedule. I mean, based on some things coming up, some you know the, I, I for me looking down through the schedule, I think the 25th of May is probably the the earliest that we would be able yeah, to I won't do be it. Here. I mean a high school graduation that was the last one. The last one finally they're all done. Yeah. It, it, so you you don't think you could get be ready before the twenty fifth. So then uh, we really for, have for to the eleventh I, I think I, I can tr I can certainly try and report back at the end of the week and, and see what Dave's availability is. Well, again Either that, we have to go to June 8th. Yeah, I, I don't think this is something as critical as some other things we get involved in myself. I mean, it, it, Jim has to be ready, and it's right, his right. schedule. And it's June 8th is probably a pretty good date. Um, got to check with Dave, too. June 9th, we, we have the tentative pu um, public input session for the public safety building. Um, but June 9th, or June, excuse me, June 8th is is okay by me. Well, see what you can do about that, Dave. I'll, I'll have a conversation with Dave tomorrow and I'll get moving on it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. We got any other business? I do. Oh. Um, you do? You can yes. go first. Um, Jim, I was wondering if um, we could think about revisiting the, um, now that we have a new code enforcement officer and everything, revisiting our building permit costs. Um, certainly. Because we, we did say that we were going to revisit it come this past January, is what we said, and now we're into March, April, May. I will uh, coordinate that with Jason and Tavis. Thank you. Um, Linda? Yes. Uh, I think next week we will be having um, some of the pictures of the 200 women, which we okayed out of Brewster. To all of you, this is a flyer or, or brochure, and it on one side it has pictures of some of the speakers, and on the other side it has the dates when every Tuesday they're going to have some kind of um, lecture series. And the five questions up above are the five questions they're going to ask. They ask the 200 uh, women. And so when you go up to a picture, if they're up here, they're going to have a QR code. You put your phone up to the QR code. It takes you to a YouTube um, uh, station. And then you hear what the, how the person answered those questions. So. That will be coming here. The other thing is, uh, I um, yesterday uh, gave Kathy Eaton uh, um, a check so that I could have a season pass on Jolly the Trolley. And I'm going to try to go to my meetings by trolley and see if I can get other people to join me. To me, this is one of the best ways that we can 
deal with the parking issue in town is to get more and more people to take the trolley. So I hope others will join me in that, and, uh, and so will the citizens of the community. That's all I have. Anybody else? Yeah, Dave. Yeah, I got one also. Last night's uh, planning board meeting, we, one of the, our workshop things we talked about were uh, accessory dwelling units. Right now, we have, they're allowed to have attached ADUs on a building. And it's coming up now being discussed about detached. And the question came up relating to hookup fees, knowing that we have, like for water and sewer, it's like it's $3,000 for up to three bedrooms and it's $1,000 per bedroom after that. And it dawned on me to, to ask the question, do we have anything or we even thought about if these if a property has a three bedroom home on it now and they put up another two bedroom ADU, should they should it be considered for, you know, additional hookup fees for the utilities that they're gonna be increasing the usage of? Um, so I just wanted to bring that up, you know, maybe for discussion and you know, for future My feeling is the reason we put that in was that day four did a study. And in that study, it told us what the fee needed to be and why we had these fixed costs. And they were what we needed to run the water system or the sewer right. system. And we need that to make that kind of a right. decision. Yep. Yeah. Because it, it, it would seem kind of unfair or somebody thinking ahead could take advantage and say, well, okay, I'm eventually going to end up with a five-bedroom facility here, so I'm just going to put in my building permit for a three-bedroom home and two years from now go in for Two bedroom ADU, you only have to pay the three thousand instead of five thousand dollars for, for hookup fees. Uh, see, see what I'm saying? The, 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 it could, they could work around it the way it is now. I think to not pay what they should be paying. To, so, and I new just, construction is six thousand for a sewer hookup. Well, just six. Okay, then additional whatever yeah. the and, and the three was for the seasonal. That's what, I was seasonal that's what I was you were thinking. At, right? Now, if, is six three bedrooms also? Yes. I believe so, yes. And, and a thousand for each additional bedroom above right. that. Yep. Correct. And, but that was done. At, we, we, we did it based on what we need to run yeah. a system. And, right. and oh, yeah. so there was a rational reason why we set the, the prices the way we did. And, and I think we owe that to the public when we try to make a decision like that is on what does it cost. So I want to make sure that we have it in place so that if they do these ADU you know, accessory dwelling units, that there is a mechanism to pick up that, that fee. I'm not sure we have it now, so it's worth mm -hmm. looking at. So. Yes, we will need to. And, and they can also build a three-bedroom house with a den, an office, a sewing room. Yeah, you can. And yeah. Well, they're trying to change legislation on that and say that <clears throat> every room is going to be considered a bedroom if you can sleep in it. Nothing to do with closets or anything else, and that's coming. Because a lot of people, like you say, will build a den and no closet. Now, right? I think I, I still, might... It still could be slept in. Yeah. I, I might be right. I might be wrong. I don't know on this. But I was told by someone at DES that also, um, if you have a, um, a three-bedroom septic and a three-bedroom house, you're allowed to have um, the inhabitants in the building are two per bedroom plus two additional, is what they've told me. So that, that technically, in a three-bedroom house, you're yeah. only supposed to have eight people living there permanently. Well, they, they also develop the amount of water they use, not by two, but 1.8 people per bedroom. Mm -hmm. Now, the other problems come, too, with some of these ADUs. They're just putting something over the garage with a bathroom. That's it. Still living space. Still is under the same codes as living space. But they're not calling it an ADU, but people are going to live there. And now what about the case if you have a big house and you have three kitchens? Yeah. And well, that's another issue, too. <laughs> yeah. I just ran into one the other day. It's supposed to be just a garage, right? Things as big as a house. <laughs> so there's not supposed to be any kitchen, right? What do I do? I went to do a rough inspection. There's a kitchen plumbed right in there with drainage and pipes and everything else. So you write them a letter. Take it out. But 
This is what they're doing. And they're doing a lot of this stuff, as you know, which we all know, a lot of people aren't getting permits for. They're just doing them. Let's take a chance. That's happening everywhere, too. That's, not, that's nothing new, but they're trying to control some of the ADUs or what are going to be an issue here in the future. Yeah, okay, do. any other business? Committee reports. Brad? Let's see. I uh, had a couple of, last night we had a planning board meeting, pretty much a work session, and had, as you know, Maggie came presented the, uh, the charrette results to us, and this morning we had a Wolf Road Community TV meeting, and uh, that was it for me. Okay. I haven't had any. Linda? Um, I had a Pop Whalen meeting. Um, I went with Brian to the EDC. I'll leave that up to him. And I went with um, Luke to the chamber meeting. Luke? Yeah, with the chamber meeting. Uh, and just as I'm bringing that up, it, it reminded me that, you know, we did have, you know, Steve Durgan, who is, you know, uh, pretty much a legend here in Wolfboro and has been part of this community for, you know, forever. And I, you know, I grew up knowing him uh, at Could You and Hawkins. You know, he passed uh, suddenly uh, last week. And there'll be a memorial service at uh, Could You and Hawkins. Uh, celebration of life service this coming uh, this coming Saturday uh, at three at three p.m. three to five at Goodwin Hawkins. So uh, he was larger than life, and uh, he, uh, he brought a lot of this good discussion to every single topic that he was passionate about. So uh, he'll be missed. And uh, I went to we had a Heritage Commission meeting. Uh, and this morning we had a emergency uh, operations planning meeting uh, with uh, Chief Zadi on the on the phone. So we um, we all had a bike meeting last week, trail oh, committee yeah. meeting, um, and that's that's progressing, that's working in the right direction. Um, the EDC meeting turned into. Um, more of a town information meeting than, than an actual EDC meeting. Um, but they're starting to focus in, in, in the right direction, I think, and um, looking, looking at different ways to, to, to better the, and support the business and the community. They're actually getting engaged and going out to the businesses a lot more than they used to, and it's, and it's very good. And um, everybody has to say a, um, a, a little prayer for Nancy Hirschberg. She broke her leg. Oh She's on our energy committee. And um, I, I'm, I'm going to mention what she said to me. She said she has new heroes, and that is our fire department and our police department. Because she said she didn't think she broke her leg, but w within an hour, she was out of the woods being cared for like she was, like she was a queen. She said they were there in no time. They, came, they were through the woods with their gator. And she said it was fantastic. She goes, I, I almost cried. She goes, I have, new, I have new heroes in town. That's always nice to hear. Yes, now, manager's report. Uh, just a couple things. As Luke said, uh, emergency management meeting this morning, that went well. Um, I had um, put into you the week, in my weekly notes um, at the recommendation of um, Selectman Harriman and Selectman Senecal, about um, doing a skim coat at the dockside parking lot. Um, this afternoon, late this afternoon, we got the price quote for that. It's, it's $17,000 to be able to do that. Dave thinks you know, it'll, it'll get us a solid five years, which should get us to the point where we have a, a definitive design and what we're gonna do down there. The, the parking lot is in terrible shape. Um, they're scheduled to be able to do it Wednesday if the board has no issue with that, we'll get that rolling. And um, Dave requested that we be able to use the dockside parking lot capital reserve fund, which with this year's appropriation will have about $240,000 in it. That'll be striped as well. Thank you. It is so needed. How could we? Yeah. yeah. Good idea. Well, I went through there tonight. Just what little bit they've done is, is better than it was. Oh, yeah. They were filling some of those I see holes. they're putting the benches up too. Luke, are you guys doing that? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Looks nice. So we'll get that going. Thank you. That's all I've got. Okay. Questions from the press?
You all set, Alyssa? I can't hear you. Still can't hear. Is it because the stuff's up on the screen? Nope. Should be. Oh, she's talking, but I can't hear her. I think she gave up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Dave, would you Any... like a motion to adjourn? No. no. We, we have public input again. Oh, I didn't see anybody. Anybody here in the public <laughs> want to input anything? Okay. Close that. You would like to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>